Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to take a 2D image, such as this Batman logo here on this book, which is a piece of paper, and show you how to transform it into a three-dimensional object, uh, such as this Batarang, and here's how I did it. So we're gonna be using a combination of uh, two art programs, one being Photoshop, uh, which is going to be used to convert the 2D image into a 3D graphic. And then the other program is going to be Chi2Box, uh, which is going to convert it uh, and render it for 3D printing. So as you can see on my screen, I have this uh, image of Batman. Uh, this is from the hardcover uh, Batman White Knight uh, by Sean Murphy. So the plan here today is to take the 2D image of the Batarang, uh, we're going to convert it into a 3D image, which I can print on my printer. And then actually I'm going to be meeting up with uh, Sean Murphy at Boston Comic Con. And the goal is going to be to get him to sign the Batarang. And so we have uh, his style of his uh, Batman logo on the bottom left corner. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do is isolate that image and uh, cut it out and recreate it in Photoshop. So uh, here's what that looks like uh, because it was such a small image it's very blurry and we wouldn't be able to use something like this we want something uh, sharp and crisp looking so I'm going to be using the lasso tool just to trace around this and make it into a new object. So I uh, already previously did all the steps uh, to convert this, but if you look at my layers, you can kind of get an idea of what I did. Uh, as mentioned, I took the lasso tool, retraced uh, the image, and then I filled it in uh, as a solid color. You want to make sure you have the image on a transparent background, and once you have that done, uh, make sure you're... Uh, Make sure you have the layer selected, and then from the drop-down menu in Photoshop, you want to go to 3D. Uh, and then scroll down to where it says new 3D extrusion uh, from selected layer and choose that. Uh, you'll get a pop-up. Would you like to switch to the 3D workplace? Uh, just to confirm, hit the yes button. And now we're in the 3D workspace of Photoshop uh, where you can rotate the image. Uh, you can see the image now has uh, depth to it. Uh, you can spin it around and see all the shadows and uh, highlights. Because this is going to be a Batarang, we don't want the uh, depth to be that big. Uh, so over on the right menu, there's going to be something called Extrusion Depth. I have my setting at 0 0.344 inches. Uh, once this gets 3D printed, I would guess the depth is going to be somewhere around a quarter inch. Um, I'm adding a little bit of extra material because once this gets 3D printed, I want to be able to go back and sand both sides, uh, remove any... Uh, supports that might be showing or any inconsistencies. I want to get that all out and make it a nice uh, smooth flat surface on both sides. So uh, once you have your settings where you want them inside the uh, 3D workspace, you'll want to export this so we could open it in a 3D program. Uh, so from the drop down menu where it says 3D in Photoshop, you'll be going to export 3D layer uh, and then you can uh, name it whatever you need to name it and just make sure the format is formatted as an STL file. Once it's formatted as an STL file, you'll now be able to open it within a 3D printing program. Okay, so now we're inside of the uh, 3D printing program Cheeto Box. Uh, I just dragged my file in there. You go to uh, open file and then open the STL file that you saved in Photoshop. Uh, I already set my uh, parameters to the size I need, uh, as well as I already added the supports. I believe I made this somewhere around 7 inches wide by 3 inches high, uh, and then the depth is still the same depth as what we uh, set it to uh, within Photoshop in the 3D workspace. So uh, here's just a quick look of uh, my support settings uh, and where I edit my supports. Once you have your supports all configured and everything looks good, uh, you can now export uh, this file uh, for 3D printing. Make sure you save it uh, as whatever file format that you need that works with your 3D printer. Uh, for my printer, it's a PWNX file. You'll then bring your file over to the 3D printer, uh, load it up and hit the print button and let the printer do its thing. I believe this particular project took somewhere between six hours and eight hours to print. This was printed on a Mono X by Anycubic, which is a uh, 3D resin printer. 
Once your project finishes printing, uh, basically this is what it's going to look like uh, upside down on your build plate. Uh, this isn't the Batarang. I didn't have time to film all of that. This is a different project I was working on at the time. But uh, basically this is what it's going to look like when it comes off the printer. So uh, once you get your print removed off of the build plate, this is basically what it's going to look like once you remove all the supports, uh, clean off all the extra resin, and uh, let this fully cure and harden. Uh, this is the end result of what the Batarang now looks like. So at this point of the project, we've uh, successfully turned a 2D image into a 3D printed object. So if you were looking to just learn how to turn uh, a 2D image into a 3D object, uh, this is all you would need to know. You could also do this with fonts or maybe company logos or uh, any, basically any 2D image uh, as long as it's connecting. But uh, yeah, as mentioned, my goal is to get this signed. So uh, we're going to bring it into the uh, paint booth now and prime it and get it ready for paint. And then it'll be off to Boston Comic Con to meet up with Sean Murphy and have him sign it. So here we are in the paint booth. Uh, we're going to get it primed. I'm using Vallejo Surface Primer in the color gray, uh, which can be sprayed on by an airbrush. If you want to prime your object before you paint it, when you first begin priming an object, you want to spray it on very lightly and slowly build up uh, the coats. Uh, this way it adheres to the object. Once you get a few light coats of the primer on, then you can go back and put it on a little bit more heavy. Once you have full coverage of the primer, you can begin to lay on your color of paint. Uh, I usually recommend uh, letting the primer dry for about an hour. Uh, this specific primer, which is, uh, as mentioned, a surface primer by Vallejo, uh, dries pretty quickly. Uh, but if you're using like a rattle can primer, you're going to want to let it dry even longer. Uh, but yeah, it's been about an hour, so now we're going to go back in and add the color. So I'm going in with the black. It's not a fully saturated black. It's a little bit more on the charcoal side. If you look closely, you can actually see little indentations on one side of the Batarang. Uh, those are from the supports. I tried to sand this down as best as I could, but uh, I'm actually supposed to be meeting up with uh, Sean Murphy to have this sign uh, the next day. So uh, I gave it a quick sanding uh, just because I'm on a little bit of a time constraint. Uh, but the other side is pretty nice and smooth, and that's the side I'm going to have him sign. So I'm not really too worried about the, the back of this uh, having imperfections on it. So here it is, all finished and painted black, and I'm really happy with the way it's looking so far. I noticed with a lot of Sean Murphy's uh, artwork, he uses a lot of uh, reds and tans and kind of like earth tone colors. So I had the idea to tape this off and try to add some uh, shadowing to the Batarang to see how it looks. I was uh, actually trying to recreate the image that was on the cover of the hard book uh, to where it has some cross hatching. So uh, here's a look of how that turned out. I really wasn't too happy with it. Uh, you can see that there's two, actually two Batarangs in the image. Uh, I actually printed another one for my friend, uh, my friend Dan, who I'm meeting up there in Boston. And then I had the idea of maybe just fading off the edges of the Batarang. Uh, so that's exactly what I did. Uh, I went in with the airbrush and I faded it on the tips of the Batarang from an orange color into a light tan color and I'm um, really happy with the results. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, super excited how this turned out and I'm um, really excited to go meet Sean and have him sign this. So uh, from here, we're off to Boston Comic Con. So here I am, I just arrived in Boston. Uh, I just got to the venue. Uh, it's actually called Wicked Comic Con. I know I've been calling it Boston Comic Con the whole entire time, but yeah, it's a uh, Wicked Comic Con. It's located in Boston. Uh, it's a really beautiful area. Definitely recommend uh, visiting if you're ever in the area. This was uh, my first time out there and I just had a really great time. Hey guys, I'm Dan. I'm Eric. Welcome to Wicked Comic Con. So here I am meeting up with uh, my buddy Dan. We did some uh, video coverage of the convention floor, so I'll show you a little bit of that. As well as at the end, I got the chance to meet uh, Batman comic book artist Sean Murphy, and I had him sign my Batarang. Uh, I had him sign a few books, and I picked up some art prints by him. I uh, had some remarks done by him. Uh, super nice guy. It was a pleasure to meet him. I uh, had an awesome time with my friend Dan. So uh, yeah, it was just a great experience, and I look forward to doing it again. Something's weird, but you 
And uh, here we are at Sean Murphy's booth. Uh, he wasn't there yet. He was still on break, but uh, he had some art prints for sale, uh, as well as some original artwork. And uh, he was also taking requests to do uh, remarks and uh, some sketches. So uh, we decided to go on another tour of the convention and uh, look at a little bit more cosplay and uh, come back when Sean arrives. Okay, and uh, here we are back at Sean's booth. Uh, he just got back from his break. Uh, he was signing some uh, books and other things for people. Uh, I did have the chance to talk to him for a little bit. I didn't film that because I wanted to uh, respect his personal space, uh, but he did sign the Batarang. So here he is uh, signing some art prints for my buddy Dan. Uh, he also got some remarks done. So you can see him, he's doing a quick little Batman sketch on the bottom there. I did pick up a bunch of art prints. Uh, I had some hardcover books signed by him. Uh, he was a uh, super gracious, uh, really great guy uh, and f fun to talk to. He had some uh, great stories to tell and I definitely look forward to meeting him again in the future. I definitely recommend you checking out his work on Batman The White Knight. He's uh, both the writer as well as the artist for that series. Uh, some fantastic storytelling as well as some amazing artwork uh, guys as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time